Good afternoon. Uh, we welcome dear to help mom. Uh, she came to teach for the Rasaniella students in Berlin um, to have a wonderful workshop on Tao sexuality. And well, we're very much interested in your ideas and how you build it to your matters. Um, so maybe you could tell us how you got into Tao oh, yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah, more than 20 years ago. There was, um, I was, used to be a dancer, so a very expressive, outgoing professional. And I remarked for myself, because I have also that character, that it's good to do something also which goes inside. And uh, so I studied yoga for a long time. Um, and then I went to India, but then I really saw that culture and that was hard for me to deal with. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel really at home. Mm -hmm. um, but then I just practiced yoga because it was healthy for mm -hmm. me and I felt I was more in balance with my profession. And then we had the performances which were so tough for the body. I was not able anymore to um, train the group. And then we invited the Qigong master, mm -hmm. and I really liked it because my body was really more fluid, my legs <laughs> kicked up higher, but yeah. without very gentle movements. So I was really surprising because I was quite hard trained. I was really surprised that it had such a huge effect. And then, then we performed during the summer time, and in the winter time we started to look for Qigong and someone said oh then you have to meet Healing Tao and I started to give to take classes of the Healing Tao and then I think oh this is really what I like mm -hmm. so that's the beginning of uh, the study mm -hmm. and now you're a Healing Tao instructor yeah. working also with the sexual energy mm -hmm. could you explain to us what actually where the Healing Tao system comes from where it stems from and what it does uh, for, for the human body? It is a very, very old tradition. And so you have, for example, the TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, and that's actually <coughs> developed in the Cultural Revolution. But my teacher, Mandak Chia, he is brought up by students uh, and uh, immortals who are related to the very old tradition. Five years, 5,000 years ago, there was a Chinese emperor who collected all the knowledge and my tradition is based actually on that uh, tradition so it's a long long time and uh, Mantak Chia he was a young uh, guy who was uh, able to be 20 years old full of filled up with all kinds of information about that tradition and he had really the mission to go to bring it abroad, to bring it into the West. And I was lucky, I got to meet him and I studied with him. And uh, what I feel is that the sexual Kung Fu, we call it sexual Kung Fu, um, is uh, a very, he made it very clear uh, how you can deal with sexuality. He made a very system, uh, very a, B, C, D, very uh, structured. structured system, uh, almost Scientology, so really very clear how you can work with sexual energy, how you can heal yourself with energy, how you can heal others with that energy, and how you can grow, not only physical by health, but also emotionally, get into balance, and spiritually. Beautiful. And um, if you talk about sexual energy, many people will maybe be confused in the West. Could you explain us what Chinese or the Taoists consider as sexual energy? Is it arousal or is it something different? Mm -hmm. Actually, we know, well, we think about sexual energy, we think about arousal, yeah. being aroused. Because then you feel you're attractive or you feel you're a sexual, uh, a sexual being. Mm -hmm. But actually, the sexual energy, when it's not aroused, it is the life force. And the life force, um, which is, um, uh, I, I immediately make this sign, 
because the life forces really hold us in our body. So sexual energy is the energy who is really embodied everything, a flower, a tree, a human being. That's the sexual energy. Mm -hmm. So a kind of orgasmic universal energy that we all build from. And how, how is it possible that the system enlarges that energy? Okay, when you are born, you get uh, sexual energy from your parents. Uh, they made love together and then you grow. Mm -hmm. So you cut, uh, you cut energy from your parents. Um, you also can get energy by eating, by breathing. Now you can get from your environment, you can get energy. But our body is also able to get, and not only by eating or breathing, but also our sexual organs, especially the ovaria and the testicles, they really are working the whole day to um, rejuvenate everything, every cell in our bodies. They are really giving energy. Of course, they are doing it to reproduce, but um, we when we reproduce, we only have 10, 12 months, something, we need that energy to reproduce for the babies. But um, our organs are doing it every time, whole day, whole night. They are, they, are, they are doing their job. And what we learn in the healing Tao system is to re refine that energy and make that really working to refine ourselves. and to embody ourselves more and more and to heal ourselves more and more. So actually the energy is transformed from a vital life force to yeah. refined energy. Yeah. So you can imagine the force which is base, the base is the, the pelvic. Um, that energy is very good for basic things. Doing your job. But that energy is a little bit too Dense, dense, and actually dense, for example, for the heart, or for example, for the glands. The glands are a very refined system uh, which is connecting all the hormones. And every when you have an impression, then that, that gland system is talking together and re balancing yourself. That's a really refined <coughs> system. Like your organs, they get food, they get impressions, and they had, have to digest it. But when you put sexual energy into that organs or into that glands, then that's too much. Mm -hmm. So we have a very beautiful uh, fur spine with big fur, fur, um, vertebras, smaller, 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 smaller. So actually, when you learn how to transport that basic energy through the body, through the spine, then it will be refined. Like, um, like because the body is, has that structure. And when you have it very refined, then it can enter all the glands, then it can enter all the cells, then it can enter to the blood, to everything that you want. Mm. Um, it's, it is like when you are giving your plants water, you do not do it when there is beautiful water, you never put water on that flower. You always give water at the roots. That's also in our body. We give the, the water, the sexual energy, which is really energy. You can make children out of it, you can walk, you can jump with it. That energy, that's, you give it to the root of the body, to the root of the system the spine and then it will be transported to more the flowers of the body. And do you get the same amount of energy when you just would do love making, natural love making? Or is it different to work with the Tao system? Um, making love? That's really refining your sexual energy. Okay. But making sex? That's not refining. So what's the difference? <laughs> Um, I like really the, the English expression, making love, because uh, when you make love, um, I think um, you are together 
and you see the other as whole as it as possible, not more beautiful, not more dressed up, or but really how someone is, and then connect the bodies together, but in respect of who the other is. And when you really connect that way, then the life force is refining because there's so much um, you balance together. Um, but when you make sex, so when you, for example, see an attractive man and you think, oh, I want that man, <laughs> then I only see, for example, his image, how he yeah. looks. And then, well, I react, I'm a woman. And when I make sex actually with him, my thoughts can be somewhere else. Yeah. So part of me is not into it. Part of me is not uh, connecting. And when everything connects, then I speak about making love. Mm -hmm. when, when there's everything possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really refining process. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, doing dual cultivation, we call it dual cultivation, um, is, uh, it is making love, that is one step. Right? Making sex, well, that's not really alchemy. Then you make a baby. But mm -hmm. Then you have outer alchemy. Mm -hmm. But when you want to uh, have transform it into inner alchemy, then because you are dealing with another person, you have to deal not only making love at that moment, but how do you um, stay who you are, and how can the other stay who he or she is? And that's that's really a question how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I prefer, or maybe it's easier, but maybe it's not easier, but I, my base is monocultivation. Mm -hmm. Just refine it for myself. And not with a partner? No, my base is mono. Mm. In many aspects the Tantra and Tao can meet, yeah. but there are also very important aspects where they don't meet. So from your opinion, where does the Tao differ from the Tantra and where do it, they coincide? Where do they really meet? Or I think uh, a Taoist trained person will choose always for the first, it's, um, you choose for immortality. Mm -hmm. And a Tantra person choose for enlightenment. That's a basic principle which is really different. And um, so it's more like a philosophy, but I think it's really work out very practical. I would be whole in my body. And a Tantra person wants to be whole and enlightened into the light. Um, and that's really the main difference. I want to be embodied, staying embodied. And in practical, I think we can uh, meet each other somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, because we are all training. Um, being enlightened means that you are so healthy, that you are so round, completed in yourself, that you are able to be enlightened, mm -hmm. that you are able to transform every everything of your body into the light, mm -hmm. everything of your soul into the light, everything of your emotions, your mental layers, everything into the light. And that means that you have to work on the wholeness, just like me, just like a Taoist people. Yeah. But in the end, we almost go to another plane. Yeah. And we stay here. Yeah. <laughs> we fire again. Yeah. The, and we heat again our food and we are cleaning the dishes. That's a big difference. But does that mean that Tao is not a spiritual practice, not a kind of religion? It's More actually not a religion. For me, it's not a religion. It's a philosophy. It's a method. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I think it's very spiritual um, in the way that um, uh, uh, being immortal, there are some immortals or teachers from me who really support me when I'm working. And they are not physically here. 
but I can feel their support and I feel um, a big connection with the nature and for me the nature is very spiritual mm -hmm. um, but it's not that I pray to a god mm -hmm. not in that way or that you symbolize that you are a god like the Shakti Shiva, the Shiva, the Shiva, the Shiva. No. no, no, I'm a human mm -hmm. being and the, well, there's a nice story. There was um, Panchu. Panchu is a man um, who, for centuries, uh, hold the heaven above his head and pressed really the, with his feet down into the earth. So he hold for centuries the heaven above and the earth below. And then after a <laughs> really, really long centuries, centuries, he kept a bit tired. And he thought, well, I have to think about another solution to hold the heaven there and to hold the earth there. And then he decided to make human beings. Mm -hmm. Human beings are the, the they are connectors. Con they are connectors and holding the heaven at the heaven and the earth at the earth. And they are connecting heaven mm -hmm. and the earth. I like that story. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> because it's all that there we come together. Because we, we think also the earth is coming through us and we, when the more we embrace the earth, the heaven will chase us. Yeah. And I think that uh, Tantra people also work a lot with the earth energy and the heaven energy and all the chakras who are like, I don't know the English word, but in the Bible you have the Jacob's mother. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, steps to go from the earth to the heaven and from the heaven down again to the earth. The angels walk through them. We mm -hmm. are So there we come together. Mm -hmm. but, but the main difference is that um, the uh, sexual kung fu, uh, we use the vertebras. Mm -hmm. We say that uh, chakras, actually the clans, we do not talk about chakras, but we talk about the organs and clans, mm -hmm. They are uh, not well, um, they can grow more mature before you can enter the sexual energy. Mm. And um, so that's why for safety we use the spine mm. to transform the sexual energy into refined energy and then feed the chakras or actually feed the organs and glands for us. Because the spine is a solid bone structure, yeah. is that what? Yeah. Yeah. And it's built from big, big, small, 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 small. Okay. Okay. Very small, actually. Very mm -hmm. nice. okay. um, in, in the in the master class, actually, we came to a point where you explained that um, to refine the energy, of course, also the heart energy needs to be refined. Yeah, mm -hmm. and of course, we have that also in tantra. That not only the genital and sexual energy needs to be transformed, but also the heart energy. And then there was one person who said, well, you know, for some male tantric practitioners or teachers, they're really good in actually expanding the sexual energy, so in the, in the lower area, but they have still have many difficulties in really expanding the heart energy. Is that the same in the Tao? Yeah. What we say is you train uh, the lower Dantian, mm -hmm. so this is a field, the belly is a field, where you can have an alchemy. Uh, we train the first, the basic of the healing Tao system. Actually, the whole Tao system is make the lower Ranjian as healthy as possible. And when that's really as healthy as possible, the natural way is to go and grow your mm. heart center. But uh, the, the basic is the lower than chin. And then we come to the heart center. That's natural. Because it's natural that when you are really healthy, that you really can take care good of yourself, that your emotions get refined. That's normal. That's just <coughs> how life is going. And when your emotions get refined, your mental layers also refined. It's also part of the heart we see. And uh, so you think you will make your mind more clear. You are more clear in your decisions. You are more, uh, the virtues are more there for you. 
and um, when the virtues are more there and the heart is more uh, refined and when you still grow your vitality because this is the center of the vitality and you have that beautiful heart then of course the center of your head where is also alchemy process is possible can be refined and that's that's uh, and why do you think that sometimes our practitioners or Taoist uh, teachers stick to this low part? What would it bring to them not to go to the refinement of the heart? Because when you uh, refine your heart, you have to face uh, also not nice feelings, mm -hmm. also pain. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to. That's that's beautiful about Buddha. Buddha, uh, the moment Buddha was enlightened, he could mm -hmm. see the the black side and the white side in at the same time. Yeah. But see, of course, um, the black things, shadows, the yeah. shadow side of this. That's not so nice <laughs> because you have to deal with your own aggression, your own or other one's aggression or pain or mm. dysfunctional. Um, so that takes a time and. Um, what is also very nice to build up your lower dantian or even only your pelvic, your only the base of the lower dantian, is that this makes you attractive and really makes you very beautiful <laughs> because you are uh, healthy, mm -hmm. you have energy, you can spread out. Uh, that's, and, and sexual energy has a little bit of tendency to be a glue, mm -hmm. so it's sticky. Uh, well, that's nice for your ego, of course, when people uh, say, ooh, mm, mm, mm. Uh, well, that's, that's really... Uh, so, if it's an ego-driven development, it only expands horizontally? At the lower. At the lower, at the lower area? If the ego is refined and actually dissolved, it can move upward and it can refine itself towards the heart center and the, the, yeah, the heart center. I, I think uh, I am not trained to dissolve my ego hmm. because my ego is very helpful. My ego is the one who is taking care of my being here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but um, it is not. Uh, so you you can. You can see it like um, the old-fashioned uh, uh, when you have a horses mm -hmm. before the uh, car yeah. and you are a driver. So the horses are like the sexual energy. Yeah, they give the power. And uh, my ego is the driver, or is he the sitting at the back? That's that's the main question. Mm -hmm. Who is the ego? Because when the ego can say it. We go that way, we go that way, then you train something else. But when it's your soul, or whether it's your, how do you, doesn't matter how you call it, but when it's more related to uh, not only you as a person, but it's related to you in between the whole surrounding, when it's that power is uh, taking care of the horses, managing, yeah. managing and the ego can watch and they can see, oh, that's a good way and oh, oh now I have to jump in because she didn't see that uh, danger or something like that. So I would like to have my ego with me. That's how I would like But to not determine. No. It's not managing the horses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very important information, I think, also yeah. for the tantric practitioners. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything I forgot to ask you which you would like to share with us? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I really, uh, uh, I think, for a specific, uh, because I am uh, in the Netherlands, a uh, healing town trainer. Uh, in the Netherlands we have a very um, beautiful group of uh, instructors. I think we know each other quite, not so well, but we know each other. And uh, what I really like is that um, I have the idea that we now have uh, the ability and the self um, for infidels that we can meet other traditions. And that's what I really liked very much from your proposal to invite me 
that um, I think this is uh, the beginning and I really like it that the uh, wisdom of the Taoist people come more and uh, I wish that everyone has such a good uh, invitation because mm -hmm. I think it's very nice that we can learn from each other. Yes, that was very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.